And I was uh, thinking about it, and we talked about the, our father is such a good father. You know, some people have been abused by their fathers. Yeah, right. And so, <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> <That's hard. laughs> I, I stretch you. You grew, you know. <laughs> All right. But anyhow, so, you know, some people misinterpret that. Uh, the Father in Heaven for the same kind of Father than they had on Earth. That's kind of sad, you know, because I had the difficulty with my father, of course, and uh, not really being abused, but just neglected. And uh, so one day I was praying and I said, you know, Father, I wish I would have had a good father. Then the voice came and says, I am your father. Oh, boy, did that hit me. <laughs> yes, he is. He is our father. He's a good, good father, isn't he? Oh, hallelujah. Yes, thank you so much, Lord. Well, Lord, as we come to you, I want to bring the word that you have given me, Father, and I just thank you for your anointing on it. I ask for anything that comes off my flesh to remove that. I ask for your spirit to rule amongst us, to be open to hear what you what you saying to us today, Lord, that we may receive it and act on that. In your precious name I pray. The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. Just when you're happy? No. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's rejoice in the Lord. Let's rejoice in his word. I received the word this morning here in Psalm 27, verses 1 through 6. It says, that The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil man advanced against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though, though, what, excuse me, though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. And then my head will be exalted above the enemies who, summon, who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Amen. Sometimes my eyes get a little watery and then I... Then I lose the, <laughs> the side of the words. Okay, well, my pray, my uh, prayer, yeah. <laughs> my subject is about prayer. And it's interesting as we look at prayer, there are many different kinds of prayers. I wrote some of them down. We can have prayer of praise, of course, praying the promises of God, prayer when angry even, prayer when disappointed. Prayer when faith is weak, prayer when feeling unloved, prayer when grieving, prayer for our leaders, of course, prayer when needing encouragement, prayer for your children, prayer when seeking God's direction, prayer when I'm sick, prayer when suffering, prayer when waiting, uh, when waiting God to answer, prayer for our country, Prayer for the world, prayer for the family, prayer for our neighbors. Hallelujah. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's part of the disciples' prayer that we find in Matthew chapter 6. You know, it's the greatest men. All of us, actually, are called to do what? The greatest thing that we, that we as people can do is to pray. 
Prayer is very powerful. Prayer is something that we communicate with God. It is working together with God. Through it, God's purposes is accomplished, and Satan's intentions are broken. That's what prayer can be all about. And of course, as we cry out to the Lord, these particular things that benefits every one of us. Now, the power of prayer lies not how much we pray, but in how much our prayers are according to God's principles. And sometimes as we cry out to God for selfish reasons, we want our own thing, we have our own desires and all that, and God hears us. But the whole purpose of prayer is to do what God wants to do. And that's why it's so important for us to understand that <laughs> the principle of God's working is that God's people must pray before God himself will rise up and work. You see, we cry out to God, and God wants to hear us. He wants to communicate with us. and then. He will be able to work with us. He does not move until we communicate with him. That's so important for us to understand. See, prayer is simply speaking out of the will of God through our mouth. We have to know through the word of God what he wants us to pray about. And as we cry out to him, he's able to act on that because we are cooperating with him. We have a wonderful time with him as we communicate with him. And it's so important for us to understand that <laughs> all the actions in heaven are governed by the actions down here on earth. What we bind down here on earth will be bound in heaven. What we release down here on earth will be released in heaven. Isn't that great? That's how powerful prayer can be. There are so many, so many different things that we don't understand about prayer because prayer is something that the enemy don't like. He don't want us to communicate with God. He don't want us to praise in God. He don't want us to worship God because he hates that. That's why it's so important when we start the meeting and all, to enter into praising and worshiping God to chase the enemy out of here. You see, he don't like it. He's just against all of that. He don't like it when you communicate with him. He wants you to listen to his lies. He wants you to listen to his deceptions. See, it's great for us to devote ourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Alert mind means that we recognize when the enemy tries to persuade us not to pray, when he tries to persuade us and telling us lies, you're not saved, you're not going to get healed, and all these kind of things. So we've got to be alert to that. We've got to refuse those kind of thoughts. The negative thoughts come from the enemy. So I always say the negativity is being developed in dark rooms. You know, when you talk about pictures and all. But that's true for the enemy. You see, it comes from the dark area, the negativity. It doesn't come from God. God is a positive God. He loves us so much. That's why he died for you and for me. Do we receive that? Are we acting on that? Are we really believing God? Let's put it that way. I talked about it a little bit on Wednesday, pointing out. Do you really believe? Do you really believe God? Check your own heart. What makes you doubt? What makes you not really believe in God wholeheartedly? Like that one man in prayer for, for his son, where he says, Lord, I want you to heal my son in my own words now, though. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Yeah. Take that away from me, Lord. We don't want to be a double-minded person. One time we pray, 
and believing it. And next time we, ah, did he really hear me? Is he really going to do it? You know, you jump back and forth. And then the Bible says, you will not get an answer from the Lord if you pray that way. If you have any doubt in your heart. But we should pray according to his will. Let's take a look in 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. How do we know he hears us when we pray and agree with him according to his word? That's why we need to know his word. That's why we need to know his promises. That's why we need to really believe with all of our heart that God will fulfill his promises, that God is there for each one of us. Yes, he has the power, but he needs our prayer to lay the tracks down for the train of his will to run. So the more tracks we lay, the farther the train can run. In other words, the more we believe and go according to his word, he will fulfill it. He's able to handle it. Take a look at Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. God encourages us to pray. That's why it says there, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door, the door will open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Isn't that great? Yes. Seek, ask, seek, and knock. That's so important for us. And we keep on knocking and keep on knocking. There's nothing wrong with that. We have this story there, like uh, somebody stole my thunder on Wednesday in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Little lady back there. <laughs> okay, now this is, this is very interesting. Pay attention here. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjudge says, the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, now this is very interesting here, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? Will he find that you really believe, that you really trust God? But the whole, the whole story of this parable explains, uh, uh, helps us to understand, first of all, there are three, three persons involved in there. First of all, there's God, of course, and then there's man, and then there's the adversary. Now, you might say, looking at that story, the godless man to represent God. He don't like God, the judge, evidently, the way it says in the story. So, so what's the deal here? Well, the, this is the deal to point out 
to be persistent, which is directed against the adversary. The adversary, of course, is our enemy, is Satan. And the purpose of prayer is to join forces with God against the adversary. The winning quality in prayer is persistence. That's what this is all about. Be persistent like that widow was. Don't give up. Don't give up. Trust God. He has a plan. He has his ways, not our ways. But he, uh, he tells us to, to ask, seek, and knock. And he tells us again to be persistent in all of this. You see, faith is persistent. It hangs on. If you truly believe God, if you truly believe his word, you hang on. You don't give up. You wait until it gets fulfilled. Faith is expectant and looks for results. You expect things to happen because that's what he said in his word. That's his promises. You expect those promises to come true. How and when, that's up to him. We will talk about that in a little while. And faith is obedient and fits its life into God's will. We always want what we want, don't we? What about God? God has a purpose for you and me to be here on earth. And we are to fulfill that purpose by being the light and the salt of the earth, especially now in this dark world that we're living in. The Lord wants us to be that light. He says, you are the light. You are the salt. Not you will be or you should be. We are. We are. That's what he says in his word. So if he says that, then we are the light. Are we shining? Are we shining in our neighborhood? Are we shining in our family? Are we the salt that preserves things of God, of course, that preserves things that, uh, you know, not just go by that. <laughs> Anyhow. Now, there's the other thing to pray in Jesus' name. So if we pray in Jesus' name, then we should pray as Christ would pray, as Jesus would pray, shouldn't we? You see, the true aim of prayer is complete submission to the Father's will that he may do his will for us, in us and through us. I want you to take a look at the passage here in, in Luke chapter 22, verse 39 through 46. It's the story about Jesus in Gethsemane. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he rose from the prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Now, this is interesting. You know, the disciples were with him all the time, and I'm sure they, they walked and walked and walked and ministered to a lot of people, so they were tired, you know. But the Lord told them, come on, stay awake, so that you don't fall into the temptation of the enemy's lies and deceptions. Because that's when, he, that's when he comes into them and we feel all tired out and, and we don't even think about God anymore. We're just thinking about ourselves. Now, this is interesting, though. Jesus said, first of all, take this cup from me. Now, you can look at this as somebody once said, it's a two-sided coin. On the one side, we want what we want. And then on the other side, you flip it over. No, not my will, but your will, God. What you want. 
That's the same for us. What I want and what God wants. You see, being honest with God, as we had uh, heard a woman pray this morning, in all honesty, you know, she, she was scared and she was uh, angry and because of her neighborhood, what things are going on and all these kind of things. I think God wants us to come honestly and bring honestly. Like Jesus said, take this cup from me. You know, he was honest about it. He didn't want to go through that. But he knew he had to. Why? Because he wanted what the Father wanted him to do. How often do we pray like that? Be honest with him, yes. Tell him your problems. Tell him your difficulties. Tell him you're disappointed. Tell him you're angry at him. Be honest with him. He wants honesty. He wants us to be in truth with him. But then on the other hand, are we willing to let go and say, okay, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That's what it comes down to in our prayer. We bring our prayers to the Lord in honesty. We have requests, sometimes maybe selfish kind of requests. The Lord listens to us. He listens to us when we get angry at him because we lost a loved one. We didn't want to lose that loved one. We knew that God could heal. We knew that God could keep that person alive for a while yet. That's hard, isn't it? And God knows that. And I'm sure he has tears in his own eyes. But it has to go according to his will. He knows our feelings. He knows our desires. And he loves us so, so, so very, very much. You see, the, most, uh, the more honest we are with God, the easier it becomes to completely surrender with him. We express ourselves with honesty, give it to him, and then we are able to say, okay, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That is hard. That is hard for us humans to understand, and we can't do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us, to strengthen us, to give us stronger faith, to have the endurance to go through things that we have to go through. When you look back in the history of, of the apostles and you know, the disciples, what did they have to go through? Maybe not sicknesses and diseases, but they had to go through being their heads chopped off, being pierced with spears, being put in a hollow tree and cut in half. All that because not my will, but your will be done, Lord. You say, well, that's a terrible thing. Yeah, but think the rewards. <laughs> yeah, they can kill your body. That's all. But the reward is you will be with him in heaven forever and forever. And they get rewarded for what they had suffered for Christ. I mean, look at Christ himself. He suffered. The suffering that he had to go through. And yet deep down, deep down, he knew he was God. But he laid it all down to become like you and me. Getting spit on, getting slapped on, getting beaten. And then crucified. Can't even imagine driving the nails into your wrists and into your feet. The Bible says the hand, but actually doctors and scientists, they, they looked at that. They says no, it might have been through the wrist, which was close to the hand, of course, because of the way the bones spread there. I don't know exactly how it went. I read it once, and I forgot the exact details, but yeah. And then putting the, the two feet together and driving the nail into that. And on top of that, it was not a smooth wood that he was nailed onto. It was just rough wood. And he was bleeding. His back was bleeding from all the beating and all. And they took all that, that so-called robe off from him and nailed him to the cross there with all the wounds on that rough wood. Can you imagine that? Then hanging there like that, and he couldn't, couldn't breathe anymore. 
That's what Jesus did for you and for me. And so when we suffer a little while, you know, can we take it? Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. But we're hanging on to what he says in his word. He promises us good things. Now, we've got to hang on to that, too. We've got to believe that God is there to fulfill his promises. The more honest we are with God, the easier it is becomes to surrender with him, and the more intimacy you will have with God. You see, once you release yourself completely to him, once you surrender yourself completely, that's what it takes. Complete surrender to him. There's no half surrender, no three-quarter, no seven-eighths, 100%. Give yourself to him. You will have the intimacy with him that you look, that you will hear the Lord more and better than you ever did before. Because that's what the Lord has. He wants us to communicate with him, and he wants us to hear him. And sometimes we don't hear him because we're not wholeheartedly there for him. There might be a whisper, which of course is strong enough, but as we communicate with him more and more, as we surrender ourselves with him more and more, we are able to hear and understand more and more what from the enemy, which voice comes from the enemy, and which voice is from the Lord, or which voice is from our own flesh. So you have to di differentiate that. The enemy tries to distract you, and our own flesh tries to distract that also, because we want what we want. And we don't get it. We get mad. We get angry. We get discouraged. Yeah. Anybody ever been discouraged? I think we all have been, haven't we? Even as we are born again Christians, we can get discouraged. But the thing is, hold every thought captive and give in to the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. What he wants, not what I want. See, faith, trust is most essential, not only to prayer, but also to the total Christian life. We live by faith. We walk by faith. We see by faith. Someone once said, like say you have wounds like I have on, on my leg there. Don't look at the wounds. If you believe in healing, look at your leg being completely healed. Imagine that, looking at it, seeing it here. That will help your faith to come stronger and stronger in, you, in the Lord. And that's, that's something that we all have to learn to focus on what God says, not what our flesh says, not what the enemy says. The enemy tells you, well, you're never going to get healed. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. You know. What does my Lord say? <laughs> I'm healed. By his stripes, I am healed. He heals all my diseases, all my sicknesses. That's what he promised. How he's doing it, when he's doing it, I don't know. I have to release myself to him completely, and that's what we must do. You see, prayer of faith can never be offered while you are wondering whether or not God is willing to do what you are asking him to do. There's doubts in you then get rid of that. Don't doubt. Don't doubt God's word. Doubt yourself. Doubt the enemy. Don't doubt God. Because he's not a liar. He's not a deceiver. He is there for us. But we have to ask, seek, and knock. We have to be persistent. We, have not to give, we must not give up. We must trust them with all of our heart. We must lay down our life for him. Again, let's take a look one more time at 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have. Now listen to it, the confidence in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, and his will is in his book, in his word. Do you know his will? If you don't really know his will, check out in the Bible. Look at your concordance. Find the words that the Lord has, has given us in his word. Okay. 
And if we know that he hears us, how do we know? Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. How do we know he hears us? When we go according to his will and we're agreeing with him. That's why it's a lot of times, well, not all the time I would say, he don't answer us until we bring it to him first. And then we are agreeing what he says in his word and not giving up until the manifestation comes through. When and how? That's up to him. It's not up to us. Yes, he could do it immediately or gradually. But his word stands true. And it is for us to believe and not doubt, trusting him completely. So if you have not surrendered yourself wholeheartedly to the Lord, I would suggest that you do that. Don't hang on to things. I used to hang on to things myself. And one day I was convicted and he delivered me from all of that. And he can do the same thing to you. Because I want to be completely surrendered to him. I don't want to hang on what I think I need or what I want. I want to hang on to what he wants. And he wants me to be completely surrendered to him, to let him work in our lives. If you're not able to do that, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to point out the things that you are worshiping. You know, you either worship God or you worship something else. You might not sing to it, you might not clap to it, but you desire it and you do that particular idol first of all. That's your priority, whatever it might be. Might be watching TV, might be your car, might be anything that you take priority over. It has priority over, I should say, before God. God is our priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God in all its righteousness. That's what the word says. So God tells us again and again how we can communicate with him how we can receive answers from him if we completely trust him. If we agree with him, what he says in his word, he looks for our agreement. Just like when we come together as a group, if you believe and somebody else has an unbelief in there, no, don't be in that group. If you believe wholeheartedly, then stick together because there's power in prayer, when people come together, the more come together, that's why it's so important to pray. That's why the churches should go on their knees before anything else happens, to cry out to God and be in agreement together. It's, it's something that uh, if there's unbelief in there, like the, when the Lord Jesus was here on earth and, and he went to, to uh, uh, whatever, wherever it was, <laughs> to his own area where he lived, he, he couldn't do anything for them. Then what do you mean? He's powerful. He's God. The Father is behind him and all that. Because there was unbelief there. If there's any unbelief, then don't pray. Then don't pray. You've got to pray for believing in God with all of your heart. And if you're still doubting about God, don't join in prayer groups those who believe in God and his fulfillment. Don't join that group until you overcome that unbelief. Like that man prayed to Jesus, talk to Jesus, help my unbelief. And the Lord will help us to overcome that unbelief. You see, true faith is not afraid to take its stand upon the word of God. The enemy will harass you with doubt and fear, yes. But it pleases God when you look only at his word and your faith on his promises. Let's take a look at Psalm 119. That's a beautiful psalm all about the word of God. David wrote how he loved the word of God and how it helped him. So Psalm 119, verse 67 and, and 71. It says, they, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your degrees. You see, if you 
recognize that when he attacks you, when he had doubts and fears in your mind, and when you're being afflicted and you're wondering about God and all these kind of things, and, and you begin to recognize that. Why? Because you looked in his word, and his word encourages you. His word ministers to you. Look in Psalm 119, verse 130. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Are you simple? <laughs> it gives understanding when you read God's word. Of course, you should pray before you read God's word. The Holy Spirit guides you. But he can explain things to you in a simple way. It's simple. God's word is there for each one of us. not there for the highfalutin people, not prayer for the high high educated people, it is there for them, I should say, but um, they usually argue or try to uh, rationalize things and stuff like that. No, that's not what it takes to believe God's word. It takes to trust. We have complete trust in him and his word that he will do what it says in his word. Oh, hallelujah. So read and feed and live in God's word. I can't emphasize that enough. We need God's word. That's our spiritual food. That's the word that encourages us. That's the, the food that lifts us up. That's the food that, that makes you rejoicing in the Lord, despite of the circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice in the Lord, Paul said. And that's so important for us, to rejoice despite of the circumstances. Yes, there comes this pressure upon us. There comes this heaviness upon us. But the only way it can be lifted as we praise and worship God and rejoicing in him, it will lift, it will be gone. Like I said before, the enemy don't like when we praise and worship God. Because he used to be part of that group up there, one of the main, main angels praising and worshiping God. And ever since he got kicked out because of his rebelliousness, <laughs> he just hates that. He hates that when people praise and worship God. He can't stand it. He says, oh, man, get out of here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Resist the enemy and he will flee from you. That's the important part. When the Lord talks to you and their voice comes in between, tries to interrupt, Resist that, stand against it, refuse it, hold it captive, and go back to the obedience of God, what God wants you to do. Okay, let's just in closing, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, use this word. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, and be strong. How about that? Be courageous and be strong. Stand in the faith. Will faith be there when the Lord comes, as we read before? Will you find faith here on earth? Will you find true believers here on earth? There will be a remnant of true believers who are willing to lay down their lives for the Lord no matter what happens. See, that's the point. The only way that you can be strong in the Lord. You have the faith. You truly believe with all of your heart. You don't give up. You don't quit. Even though it's not being fulfilled yet, you hang on to his word. You trust him with all of your heart. And he will do it in his way, in his time. But the big thing is for us. Can we release it? Or can we just say, take this cup from me, Lord? But can we also say, not my will, but your will be done? Ah, that's the Lord's prayer. That's the way we should pray. Yes, be honest to the Lord. Bring your request to the Lord. He is there for you. He hears you. And he might do it immediately. He might not. Will you still trust him? Or will you be mad at him, angry? You wonder, did you really hear me, Lord? He heard you. He heard you. 
He heard the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus had to say, but not my will, Lord. Your will be done. Oh, hallelujah. So don't look at your flesh consumed by disease. Look at it as being healed, resist, and commanded to leave because it lines up with the word of God. Believe that you will receive, that you will recover. Why? Because faith is the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So re keep rejoicing in the Lord. Bring your requests to him, yes. But also be willing to surrender and say, not my will, but your will be done. But as we pray, according to God's word, we are agreeing with God. He will do it. How and when, that's up to him. Hang in there. Trust him with all of your heart. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep on being persistent. Keep on knocking. Ask, seek, and knock. Don't give up. No matter what your flesh says, no matter what the enemy says, don't give up. Be strong. Stand firm. And act by the faith that the Lord has given you. Ask the Holy Spirit to increase your faith. Yes. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you in any circumstance. He's there for us. He lives inside of us. He's our guide. He's our comforter. He ministers to us as we are willing and open to him. So don't listen to your flesh. Don't listen to the enemy. Listen to what God says in his word. Read his word. Study his word. Memorize his word. Whatever it takes. Chew on it. Chew on it until it sinks in. Until you understand. He says there it's simple. For the simple. The word of God is for the simple. It's there for each one of us, but we have to be willing to receive it. We have to be willing to act on it. And I pray that we all act on that, what we heard today. So don't get discouraged. Stay firm and strong in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And hallelujah, he'll be there for you. The only way we can please God is through the faith that he has given us. When he sees that we trust him that we trust him. Then he's able to work. Then he's able to release what we need. But we have to agree with him in through his word, what he says in his word, okay? All right, Lord. This is all yours, Lord. I pray that every one of us learn to release things to you. And I pray most of all that every one of us surrender completely to you, Lord, so that we are able to communicate better with you, that we're able to hear you better also. We thank you, Lord, that you want us to have an intimate relationship with you because you love us so much and you want to talk to each one of us. But the only way we can hear is what we, when we do what you ask us to do, as we line up with you in agreement, as we are willing to lay down our lives for you. Oh, Lord, let it be happening here in this fellowship, all those people that come in here, that they begin to see, first of all, how much you love them and how much you desire to communicate with them, to bring them the good news, to bring them the good words for each one of us. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength to hang on there. As Joy once said, we are victorious in the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we are. And we thank you for being victorious because of what you have done for each one of us. That we may always, may we always rejoicing in you and knowing that you love us that much, that you gave your life for each one of us. And may we do the same for you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you all.